Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and joining me today uh, for an encore presentation is Stephanie Bergo. Um, Stephanie uh, holds a degree in applied neuroscience coaching and a master's degree in cultural business management. She's been a potential catalyst for more than a decade. She has supported many individuals and businesses in achieving their goals. And Stephanie's goal is that every person uh, can bring the best of herself to the role that suits her. Stephanie, welcome back to The Remarkable Coach. Thank you for inviting me again. <laughs> it's I, a real pleasure. <laughs> you know I had to because when we talked last time, I think, I don't know if our episode was two hours long, but I think you and I talked for almost two hours. Yes, we, we talked we for, a long talk time. for almost two hours. And I think that the, uh, yeah, an hour and two minutes <laughs> had been published. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was great. We had, we had a great conversation. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so of course I had to, I had to bring you back on. And Thank um, you. for those of you listening and watching, um, if you haven't seen the first episode with Stephanie, um, that was released on January 25th, 2023. So yeah, about five months ago from the day we're recording now, probably we're looking at like, you know, six to seven months from the day that this one is published. Um, so go back and check that out. Um, it was a really, really good conversation as evidenced by the, uh, you know, we went a full hour and then continued to talk off, uh, yeah. off, off screen. <laughs> so, totally. um, anyways, yeah. So Stephanie, for those, uh, for those of our, our guests and viewers, um, who have not had a chance to listen to your first episode, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself in your own words and what it is exactly that you do? Sure. Sure. So yeah, so I'm a coach uh, and I mostly, uh, um, work with entrepreneurs like 85 percent of my business is with entrepreneur and 15 others are people that want to throw everything up and change totally their life so for example they get to a point where they have everything they expected they wanted yeah. and when they get there they're like ah it doesn't feel like i expected it would it doesn't fulfill me the way i think it would Clearly, it's not exactly what I thought. And so people come to me and they're like, okay, I'm a bit mixed up. I thought I would be very happy and fulfilled doing this, 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 and this. And some, most of the time they have a family, a marriage, a great job or a great business, and still they don't feel. So we're mostly going on a discovery path when we do that because they don't know what would fulfill what they think they are missing and everything so I love that also and I've been a coach for only a coach and I put it in, in <laughs> uh, for the past seven years before I was also a project manager that's how I became a coach actually I used to work in event planning then in project management for entrepreneurs and all at the time at the end of the project or when we were releasing like the new product, the new line of business or whatever, entrepreneur, which is totally normal, got stressed. And finally, you always manage the human more than the project. And seven years ago, I decided to go, as you said, uh, in a master uh, in neuroscience applied to coaching because I wanted to help them other than with my personality, I help them really with uh, understanding how it works. Sometimes your brain, you 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 feel like you're working on stuff and it doesn't go through, and you're like, "How come?" Like I'm putting all that energy and intention, and even that doesn't make exactly what I feel that I would like to achieve. So I went in neuroscience, and I'm a how do you say that? I'm um lifelong student uh -huh. i just finished another year of uh, coaching training with a um, guy named guillaume Zlud, which is a guy from quebec he's mm -hmm. known all over 
but he's very interesting. And it's all about uh, like the um, managing anxiety because yeah. everyone has. And unfortunately, some people think that we have to get rid of anxiety as it's almost impossible. Like it's a message from your brain that something is not exactly as it should. And yeah. it's like for emotion, for example, if you are you have fear, well, it's sometimes to save your life. So just mm -hmm. like you have to understand what those messages mean and how to take care of them. And so for the past year, I've been training with him on anxiety management and it was super cool because it's the it's the the best predictor of eye anxiety is um you know fly fight and freeze so yep. when you freeze or when you um well fly when you decide not to go and um sometimes you're scared of some stuff and instead of confronting that you're kind of trying to avoid yeah. and that's one of the biggest problem in our society we try to avoid things that are not easy nice happy and fun so it comes back after like many many things come back so and those those kind of behaviors right i mean they, those kind of behaviors exist in us for for a very important reason because for thousands of years as we were evolving Right. We want to avoid things like, you know, maybe we're scared of the dark because there might be a tiger out there. Totally. But in 2023, it's important to be aware that, you know, there's for most of us, we're not oh, worried. Tiger. We're not worried physically <laughs> about tigers. Right. But but we but we still have these mechanisms and these these reactions and these chemicals in our brain that that, you know, feel terrifying even though you know there's 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 it's not life or death literally at stake totally and one of the best way to overcome fear is to be courageous mm -hmm. and the brain doesn't do the difference between a real danger and a presumed danger so right. for example uh being scared of talking in public is a great fear in the world. Many, many people are scared of that, but the brain react as if it was a tiger. Mm -hmm. And if you, it needs to be controlled. If it's very, very scary and you put yourself in those situation, you increase the level of stress and anxiety. And sometimes it's, it, it doesn't do exactly what you want, but if it's, I would say a normal fear, five out of 10. The best way to overcome that is to be courageous. Yeah. Go and, for example, talk for two minutes instead of for an hour. And one day yeah. you talk for two and then for five and then for 10 and then for an hour. Yeah. But clearly, <laughs> if you only, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. Michael, you're going to go with, for me because you're a lot more able than I am. And then time builds and you're like okay it's been like five years i'm scared of that and the, the 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 fear grows and you're more and more but and that's for for example speaking in public but some people are scared of driving and instead of doing it they they avoid and sometimes people are scared of having a difficult conversation none of us love having a difficult conversation with our loved one with our colleagues with our employees with our friends with yep. none of us yeah, but some do, even though it's not easy and some run and those that run, well, if you don't and, you know, you're you're married, you have a life. If you run from conversation one time, it's one thing. But if every time you run from conversation because you don't want, well, it's going to catch you up mm -hmm. like things won't get better. Mm -hmm. And so running, running away from things you fear is one of the biggest reason people have anxiety mm -hmm. or freezing. And like, for example, you don't like your job. There's something you don't like. You don't want to talk with your boss about it because you're scared of the reaction of whatever. You stay in that job. 
for a year, for two years, for five years, for 10 years. And one day the doctor said, you're burning out. Yeah. Oh, well, it's really now you're burning out. Sometimes it's when many, many other things in your life are difficult, but yeah. most of the time it's because you didn't answer or take care of something that was there for a long time. It's a slow process, right? It's not, it's not so you don't wake up one morning and be like, Oh, I'm burnt out. It happens oh. over, over a period of time as you're suppressing, you know, your, your, your own needs, whatever those are. Right. And you're not, you're just not answering the call of yourself. <laughs> totally. And yeah. most of the time it's out of fear because uh -huh. why won't you choose yourself out of everyone and anything yeah. else because you're for example if you talk to your boss scared he will fire you uh -huh. or you're scared you won't find something else or you're scared that the money will won't come in or you're it's rarely because you're at peace with something that you don't go for it yeah and like everyone has fear yeah. honestly no one i know even people saying I'm not scared of anyone and anything they are yeah for some stuff yeah yeah it's interesting I think you know even with the um uh, with the public speaking uh concept or the the, the mm -hmm. example that you gave I've read that that uh stems from again you know old times thousands of years of of tribalism and fear of being rejected from the tribe and you know a thousand two thousand three thousand ten thousand years ago if you're rejected yeah. from the tribe you're on if your you own you're dead. then you're dead you can't survive yeah. on your own exactly five thousand mm -hmm. years ago again today it's just not a realistic fear and 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 being i don't know i think i, th I feel like there's there's a, a really important place for self-awareness and understanding why you're afraid of these things in, in, in 2023, in today's in modern society. Totally. And sometimes it's very much because it's like that. Mm -hmm. Often I talked with client, friends, colleagues, employees, and we're talking about something and they're like, I'm very, very scared of applying on that new job. Okay. Why? Well, maybe I won't get it. Okay, but the situation you're in at the moment, you don't have it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you apply, you get a chance to have it. If you don't, you don't get a chance to have it. So mm -hmm. that's the first thing. The second thing, when you ask them, why would you be scared? And you take a step back and you analyze it and you're like, yeah, but people make things means stuff they don't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for example you're an entrepreneur you want to gain money and you want to live out of your practice and at the beginning it doesn't work mm -hmm. that doesn't mean you're not good mm -hmm. and so often we make stuff mean stuff they don't like it's not because you do money that you're a real good person. And it's not because you don't do money that you're not a good person. Mm -hmm. And it's not, for example, because your business doesn't grow as fast as you want that you're not good. But mm -hmm. so, so often we make things mean some stuff about us where it's not about us. Mm -hmm. Maybe, for example, the example of the job you apply and you don't get the job. It might not be because you're not good enough. It might be because your profile doesn't suit exactly what they need. Or your profile doesn't suit exactly what they want that job to become. Mm -hmm. But when you're sure about your worth and you apply, maybe it works and maybe it don't. And sometimes another thing that people forget about is what is the riskier is it riskier to apply and don't get it mm -hmm. or not to apply and stay exactly where you are wondering if mm -hmm. for example yeah I mean, there's a there's a classic saying in 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 english anyway that's like 
you know, if it's, uh, it's better to regret something you have done than to regret something you have not done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then at least, at least you tried. When Gretzky said that, uh, all the, sh all the shots you didn't take cannot go in the net. You miss, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Yeah, exactly. That's my man right here. Oh, uh... <laughs> <Little, little Gretzky. laughs> I know you were a fan of when Gretzky. <laughs> oh, of course. He's, he's the great one. Of course I am. Yeah, of you're right. Of Gretzky. <laughs> but it's totally that like, and sometimes people stun themselves by being scared or, and then I talk to people, they come in my office just to work on their objective mm -hmm. and okay, how come you're not exactly where you would like to be? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, life, and it's true, life happens to everyone. I Last time I had the chance to, but unfortunately I didn't go for it because I was scared or I didn't, um, I, I went to the interview, but I was so scared it won't work that I... I was a bit shy and not uh, exactly as good as I am normally. And so people live out of fear mm -hmm. a lot too often, mm -hmm. a lot. So it's important to, to reflect on what do I have to lose if I try? Mm -hmm. And it's also important, honestly, to other people that have su success have tried mm -hmm. and all of them has, uh, have failed. I love that. There's, there's a there's a concept in the U.S. military called Red Team. Are you familiar with Red Team? No. Nope. So the idea with Red Team is to you basically you get a team. So so you've got your plan, and then you get a team of people who play devil's advocate, and they and they try to attack. They poke holes in the plan, and they mm -hmm. try and figure out what's wrong with the plan. I think there's there's another thing that I like to do sometimes that's similar to that. I'm drawing a parallel here mm -hmm. where if I've got a plan and I feel some hesitation or some sense of fear around it, I'll flip the frame around and I'll, I'll consider what is the worst possible outcome if mm -hmm. I do this. Is totally. the right? Am I, yeah. Is the world going to explode? Am I going to lose my house? Could I lose my family? Um, you know, could I get sick and die 99 times out of 99 times? The answer is no to all those things. Right. Yes. But you have mm -hmm. to, but you're, you're, unless you spend the time explaining the logic to yourself, mm -hmm. right. Cause the brain's not going to just figure that out on its own. Nope. But if you, if you take and time, it to, seems yeah. very worst right. when you haven't realized, oh, it's not that bad. Yeah, if you if you take time to run through that exercise, and I'll I'll write it down on a you know with a pen and paper, and I'll be like, this is, this could happen, this could happen, this could happen, this could happen. These are all the terrible things that could happen, and then I'll read over that list, and I'll be like, this isn't so bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. And often, what I do with my client, I ask them to do exactly the same yeah. if it's exactly what they're planning that happen. So you apply to the job and you don't get it. What are the worst things that could happen? You yeah. apply to the job and you get it. What are the best things that, that could happen? Yeah. And sometimes just comparing both, you're like, oh, that's not that bad. Like if I don't get it, I don't get it. But if I do get it, it's going to bring me more joy, more money often, more yeah. uh, responsibilities, more. So you extract the courage Mm -hmm. To do totally. stuff consciously with clearly there's a lot more positive outcome than negative one. Yeah. I love that. I love that phrase, extracting, extracting courage. You get to, you know, by, by running through that exercise and not only considering the worst possible outcome, but also considering the best possible outcome, you can look at your opportunity cost for not doing it. You can look at the potential ROI and extract the courage to just bleep and do it. <laughs> and totally. just it I happen. don't know if you, you've watched the movie, I Bought a Zoo with Matt Damon. I Bought a Zoo. And I've never even heard of that one. Yeah, it's a, it's a good movie. I okay. love it. But there's one time in the movie where he talks to his son about his mom. Uh -huh. uh, and he's like 20 seconds of courage. That's all uh -huh. it takes. 
-huh. And that sentence, I repeat it again and then again and again to my client, to my friends, to my kids, to 20 seconds of courage. So he's talking about the fact that he, he walked by a, a, co a coffee place and he saw her in the vitrine and he got in and says, I, and now you know the story that they're together and they had kids. So he's explaining to his son that all it takes, it's 20 seconds of courage. And it's exactly the same. Huh. You want to send an email to someone and you're scared, 20 seconds of courage, you want to go in a meeting and like you go, I don't know, in a networking event and you're like, oh, I should talk to that guy. He, he looks very interesting. 20 seconds of courage. Uh, you want to step like you want to do bungee. You want to do uh, parasailing. You want to do 20 seconds of courage when it's done or when you start the movement, it's already too late to come back. So uh -huh. all it takes, it's 20 seconds of courage. And sometimes I do this. I say that to my son, for example, he's scared of the dark. Uh -huh. And I'm like, 20 seconds of courage. You uh -huh. just go down the stairs, you open the light, and then you're okay. Yeah. He's like, <gasps> but he counts 20 uh -huh. seconds of courage. And uh -huh. he's able. Uh -huh. so, and it's the same to cross a bridge where you're not like very comfortable with height. It's a... Yeah. But the 20 seconds of courage, what it brings, it's just enough to do the first steps. Because uh -huh. when the first steps is made and you feel like I'm safe, okay, uh -huh. nothing bad happened, then I can take the second one and then the third one and then the fourth one. And 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 it's it's like with everything else. If, for example, speaking in public very scares you, don't start by an hour a podcast uh, in right. front of a hundred of people recording it. No, <laughs> like don't, don't put yourself, if you don't feel like it and you're too scared, don't put yourself in a situation where you're going to mess up. Yeah. Put yourself in a situation where, for example, you're going to talk with someone new uh -huh. for a couple of minutes and then you're going to talk in front of uh, friends and then like uh, an, an anniversary and next time. And then like that, I, I call it building evidence. Yep. You're building small evidences okay. that... You're safe when you do that. It's okay when you do that. Yeah. So a couple things there. Building evidence I love. I had a coach who had me do that as well. And what I would he would have me do is anytime something good would happen during the day, I had a stack of post-it notes and I was supposed to write down my win on the post-it notes and put it on the computer monitor. And at the end of the day, there's evidence of a good day all across. Yes. It's a stack in the evidence for, for, for doing well. Um, and 20 seconds of courage. When are you going to write that book? <laughs> title 20 seconds. That's a book title, Stephanie. That's a, that's a great book title. <laughs> I'm just saying you should write. I a don't book. know if I need to pay trademark to uh, I bought a zoo or something. <laughs> <laughs> that, and he says point. 20 seconds of insane courage. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a, I mean, that's a, that's a great book title. Um, and but... so often people are like aiming for the top and it's okay. Like you have to have a vision of where, like, uh, like archery, you know, when you have a, an art and, um, an arrow, mm -hmm. if you don't have any, a bullseye or, um, target. Yeah. Well, if you don't have any target, you might be the best archery at, of all time, but yeah know where to go so yeah. you need to have a vision of where you want to go but you have to remember that everyone it's step by step that they achieve or accomplish or whatever mm -hmm. so sometimes you make the pressure of becoming that so far from where you feel you are at the moment mm -hmm. become like a bullet um no um yeah you know, to your ankle, like when you used to be a prisoner, when you... Yeah, okay. shackles, shackles. Yeah. Oh, first time I hear that word, shackles. Yeah, or ball and chain. Yeah. Either, either one. So instead of making it like the, well, 
the place you want to go and what you want to achieve, the distance between where you feel you're at and the distance where you feel you want to go is mm -hmm. too large. Uh -huh. And instead of not taking those steps, you freeze, for example. Uh -huh. But honestly, if we freeze today, in five years, we're going to be exactly at the same place, sure. but with a lot more anxiety yeah. because we were like, geez, I'm still there. Uh -huh. I haven't. Okay. So why don't you take the first step? That's one of the yeah. first thing when I start working with someone. What's the first step? Yeah. I don't know. I'm so scared. What's the first step? Sometimes the first step is only to close your eyes and envision where you want to be. Yeah. And what's the worst that could possibly happen if you close your eyes and just think about where you want to be? Literally nothing. You're good. <laughs> totally. totally. Totally safe thing to do. When I um, when I studied in uh, management, I had a class in entrepreneurship, uh, which now uh, I work a lot in those fields. But the teacher was super cool. And one of the things he asked that changed a lot my mind at that time, he was like, what are you ready to lose? Yeah. And what are you not real ready to lose? Okay. So at that time, I wasn't ready to lose my family, my mm -hmm. husband, my kids. But all the material stuff, for me, I was okay losing like my house. I was okay losing money. I was okay losing time. Mm -hmm. Some of my co-workers were a bit older, were in a different situation, as arrived to Canada a couple of months prior, a year prior, and they were not ready to lose other stuff. So as long as you know what you're not ready to lose, you're a lot freer to choose which moves you're going to do. Because when you do the, what's the worst that can happen? If the worst is losing your home and that's a non-negotiable, you don't want to go there. And mm -hmm. the chance are that it's probably like, I don't know, 50, 50 or even 30, 70, but for you, it's too much. You know, you know, it's, it's not your path. You're going to yeah. go another way. Yeah. But not don't try convincing you to do stuff that you feel that are not right. Sure. But be aware that sometimes what your brain's telling you is not totally true. Because mm -hmm. he's there to make sure you stay safe. But staying safe might mean staying on your couch doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So just make sure that you're aware that sometimes it's not very dangerous and that you can go from point A to point B, then point C. And like I see the guitar behind you and everything, and we've talked about it last time after the after the podcast, but to become a, a real good musician, and I, I say that so often to my client, why? Do we think that becoming an entrepreneur, for example, is supposed to come naturally? What in life have you experienced to be easy at first? Some people have talent, mm -hmm. for real. Some people naturally have talent. Perfect. If you want to become a real good musician, you need to put your art into it. You need to work on it. You need to make mistakes and start again and start again and start again. So now you're confident that when you play that song, you know how to, because you've been practicing it for sometimes a hundred times, even more, mm -hmm. thousands of hours when you get to see. So it's, it's exactly the same thing. You're comparing yourself yeah. to amazing people you see that have been working on those skills or taking small steps and action for you don't know many years mm -hmm. and make it means that you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. It's sure. I, 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 I touch one of your guitar. I'm sure I'm going to tell myself I'm not good. I'm not a musician. I haven't played. I'm not able to read music. It's not one of my skills. And my, my sisters are very good at it for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> honestly, doing gymnastic, I used to be a gymnast. I do flips and People are like, I don't know how that works. Yeah. I totally know, like blinding my eyes. I know where 
every part of my body is because yeah. in gymnastic if you lose the sight you still need to land if, yeah so you're able to do many many things but you get to become confident at it when you've done it a couple of times so where in the professional world do you think that you're supposed to be confident and to be good at something you haven't done yet yeah and i think that's i mean that's a that's a, that's a great point i think the a really good question to ask yourself as you go into any endeavor whether it's entrepreneurship or learning how to play guitar is is it is it reasonable for me to be good at this right at right just from the get-go having never done it before and yes. the answer to that is probably no it's probably unreasonable that you would be good at it if you've never done it before is it reasonable for me to stink at this having never done it before? Yeah, I'm probably going to stink. I'm probably going to suck. It's going to sound like crap the first time I play guitar. If you like just expect that, then it doesn't maybe it's not that that takes some of the fear away because it's it's logical that you yes. would be bad at something at first. And also remember cuz some high achieving people don't like to be in a situation where they might fail. Uh -huh. or might not good be good at first uh -huh. if you don't go you're gonna want to do something new one day mm -hmm. it might not be guitar because you're like wow well, never mind it's not that useful like for example but if you never try stuff even if you're a high achieving person if you never try stuff that take you out of your comfort zone that bring you like a a, a bit of chill and like you're not courageous mm -hmm. if you keep in your track all the time you're not evolving as you could mm -hmm. what are you leaving on the table one of my mentor in quebec says sometimes and it it me like 10 years ago when i heard that uh, he was like, I, when I die, come in the paradise door and talking with St. Pierre, for example. And he's yeah. like, okay, so Michael, you check the music thing. You were very good at it uh, when, and the tour and everything. Okay. You check the podcasting. Oh, you were very good at it. And the father thing and the husband thing. And, and he continues reading without checking. He's like, and so you're asking him what did you what, what didn't you read oh those are all the things you were able to do and you didn't do uh -huh. and that hit me like hell i was like okay <laughs> what am i leaving on a table when uh -huh. i the easiest path yeah like what am i not doing what what so i'm what am always... I missing out on right what am i missing yes. out on because we only, we're only here once Sure. You're only here once, people. Make the best of it. Like, don't, yes. yeah, don't miss out on stuff. <laughs> and I want, like, the thing I want is being impactful and helping others. So yeah. if I'm leaving stuff on the table, I could even more because yeah. I'm shy, scared, insecure, uh, whatever. I'm like, what am I leaving on the table? Uh -huh. And that, when I work with my client, it's super fun because sometimes they have the impression because, you know, some people are very, very easily um, um, dreaming easily and wanting stuff more. But uh -huh. some people are very anxious because they don't know what else do they want. Uh -huh. And that's also a truth. If you are today evaluating every single uh sphere of your life for example mm -hmm. and you have the impression that you're 10 out of 10 in fatherhood in family time in work and money and what's next like if you're 10 out of 10 on everything you could die tomorrow and it, like it's okay you have, you've achieved everything Mm -hmm. But sometimes you've been so scared of moving in path you were not familiar with that you stop the dreaming of other stuff you don't have yet. Mm -hmm. And people arrive in my office and they're like, I don't know. I feel empty. I don't know. I don't have like the drive to do things or things. Okay, so what do you like? I don't know. <laughs> so instead of sometimes 
they're I have high achiever that come and they're like, it doesn't go fast enough. I'm like, calm yourself. You can't be good at everything at first. Give you a mm -hmm. chance. But each time you do those learnings on stuff you don't know yet, you open new doors in your brain, you add diversity, you uh, nourish your life. And all the time you don't, it's like um, shutting the lights and like, ah, uh, no, that seems too difficult. Guitar mm -hmm. for me won't be not, mm -hmm. no, no. And nobody likes to be very bad at something. Yeah. But all the one that does can become good. And I think something. I think it's easier to be bad at something if you if you begin with the expectation of being bad. Totally. Like I, like I said, like it's it's reasonable to stink at something the first time you do it, and it's yeah. reasonable to expect that you will improve the more you practice. And one of the questions I ask myself and I I um, talk about often <clears throat> is. Is it reasonable or not? Sometimes mm -hmm. you're so bad or you're so good at hiding yourself that yeah. you will say, no, it's not reasonable because I do everything and I achieve everything. And okay. So if your husband come to you and say, I'm going to try guitar, mm -hmm. I'm sure I will be good, but I'm very scared. Will you, your, your husband, your best friend, your kids, do you think that if someone comes to you Mm -hmm. saying yeah i never done that but i'm gonna start and i'm gonna be like amazing at it first time and i'm a bit scared it, it won't be the case you will tell them sure do it for the first time and you'll be the best <laughs> no so sometimes we're not very accurate about us no. so i no. use you said like legitimate but i use normal not normal is it normal uh -huh. that for, and and normal not normal works for a lot of things it works for anxiety it works for emotion is it normal you're sad because your best friend left for another con another country is it because sometimes people feel that it, it, they're not um totally seen when they feel some stuff and they're like oh my god uh, i geez i'm still sad i had that that conversation about grief with one of my clients last week and i was like there's no time for grieving. Uh -huh. Nobody else can tell you, oh, now it's been six months. You should like come over it. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Yeah. So you're allowed to feel whatever you feel for as long as you still live. And we're not talking about depression. We're not talking, we're talking only about normal, not normal. When sure. you lose someone special for you, it's normal. Sure. So, and if your kids come and a friend change school, you will say it's normal for them to be sad. Is it for you as well? So sometimes we're not the best critic of our life. Sure. Because we're sometimes very tough on ourselves, and we think that we should be or shouldn't be some stuff. And I think in any situation, right, it's, it's difficult in any situation, it's it's if you're heavily involved and, and enmeshed in a situation, you know, it's difficult to see the storm outside of the eye of the tornado, you know, or, or yes. uh, it's difficult to tell the forest from the trees when you're in the forest. Totally. Not to mix metaphors. <laughs> no, but you're right. And sometimes people don't know about that. They're like, for example, I was talking to a friend this week and I was like, I'm helping hundreds and hundreds of entrepreneurs, like for example, looking at their business model and making change. And I will need help to make mm -hmm. sure that my business model is the one I really want. Why? Mm -hmm. Because you're so into it that sometimes when you have question, you're not able to uh, separate what is right now and what mm -hmm. you expect it to be. So mm -hmm. having, like in my case, having coach friends that are into business, it's perfect. We mm -hmm. go for lunch, we talk about it, and I see clearly, much more clearly what should be the next step. 
it's exactly the same for everything. Yeah. Yeah. At, at what point does this kind of coaching, so we've been talking for the most of this podcast, we've been talking about the idea of anxiety, right? At what point does the, because this is, and then that's kind of the focus, I guess, of this podcast and having you on a second time is what's new since the last time we talked and you've been working with, uh, with, with a mentor, a coach on, on yeah. this anxiety stuff. At what point does this kind of coaching become therapy? Like, is there, is there some, I feel like there's crossover there, right? With someone sits down on your couch and they're like, I feel empty, help me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, totally. Yeah. We are not with me. We're not in therapy. <laughs> Because the difference, like, for example, the the biggest difference, and depending on the therapist you're working with, surely, yeah. it depends. But I'm not working on the past. Mm -hmm. I'm working on the effect that those choices you've made or not made mm -hmm. have brought today. So today you come to me and you're like, I feel empty. Okay. So why is it a problem? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't feel fulfilled. Perfect. What would you like different? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay, perfect. Is there, and one of the first thing I do with all my clients when I don't know them, because most of them I work for a long time with them, is doing what we call a wheel of life. So mm -hmm. the out of, one out of 10, where are you um, in your family life, in your money life, in your professional life, in your uh, contribution, in your... So we choose normally seven, eight or nine um, big family of like sports, for example, health, uh, family, couples, uh, whatever. And out of 10, you choose where you're at. So it gives me an overview of okay so you feel empty but still you're nine out of ten and in, in your marriage perfect you're 8.5 out of 10 with family yes yes i feel that we're having enough time and it's great time and we're having fun okay perfect oh money we're at six out of ten yes but the job doesn't work that much and the money doesn't come as i want it but perfect mm -hmm. sports two out of ten okay so it doesn't mean that that will be the priority. But if you're not taking care of yourself, of your health, of your time, of your, and also don't love the job you're doing and don't get the money you would like to, mm -hmm. we have like a situation. And sometimes we're not working directly on the job, for example. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we need to figure out some stuff. You need to have a plan. You need to reflect on what you want. And if you don't know what you want, but you know that what you have is not what you want, mm -hmm. we, in, before just asking you to move or asking yourself to move, you need to know where you want to move. It's the same thing as the, uh, the, the archery uh, earlier. Yeah. So sometimes we do start by... For example, okay, so starting next week, you're going to move. Half an hour, every two days, you're going to go for a walk. Or mm -hmm. you're going to go biking. Or you're... Perfect. You don't know where you want to do? Perfect. Read some uh, offers, job offers. Mm -hmm. And what it feels. Like, that feels good. Oh, that, nah. I wouldn't like to be calling people for money. Okay, perfect. So we know that doesn't work. And... I'm talking about job, but it could be like, I have one of my clients. She's so funny. She's like, she, she felt that other than work, nothing else was worth it. So we've worked on that. And I was like, it's sure you're working, taking care of the kid, working, taking care of the kid, working, taking care of the kid. So yeah. what do you love? I don't know. What did you love when the kids weren't there? Uh, when I was younger, I like drawing. I like painting. Perfect. You're going to go in a painting class. Okay. So she went back and she was like, nah, I liked it, but not that much. Okay, perfect. So we're going to try new activities. Try something else. Yeah. yeah. She was like, so she texted me. She was like, we went shooting like, uh, how do you call this? Um, you Skeet know, this? Yeah. Yeah. 
she's like with, it's with not gonna yeah it's not gonna be my new pa passion i'm like perfect you tried something else you don't <laughs> like it perfect you're gonna yeah. try something else so and she started doing krav maga which is uh nice um some martial art uh, and yeah. she liked it i was like perfect that doesn't bring you the job you want but that brings your brain into a new uh disposition of seeing the stuff you would love and being able to achieve new stuff and try new stuff perfect mm -hmm. sometimes it's not hitting the wall that you'll find exactly what you want it's trying another way so mm -hmm. it's not therapy because therapy for me is often like when i was younger i did <laughs> that and sure so yeah, but sometimes the infos are necessary to understand where you're here and you don't want to stay there and go back here if you don't move yeah. and it goes back to what we were saying what's the worst about staying here and what's the worst about moving forward even if it's in a direction for now not that clear mm -hmm. and most of the time it's worst staying where you are because you feel stuck because you feel uncomfortable because you don't like something because so yes and action is always the predictor of success whatever success means for you one step at a time and sometimes one very small step at a time and being comfortable of doing two two front steps and five backward steps and then it's okay as long as you're moving and learning to be nice with yourself because huh? sometimes we're very hard on us mm -hmm. so all of this helps and one thing that's very, very important when you're a good coach, you bring autonomy mm -hmm. and not the contrary. You don't want people to be like, you don't want to lead them. Like do that, do this, try this, try that. Because they're not building confidence that they're able to find on their own mm -hmm. and take care of their, their themselves and everything. So when people come to me, I'm not like, I'm not the one doing the path. They are choosing. Sure. And like that, we, as you were saying earlier, create evidence mm -hmm. that we're able to. So you tried that. Very cool. How was it? I ate it. Perfect. Now, you know, you don't like that. <laughs> Try something else. Try something else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think especially, I mean, it's it's pretty typical in with entrepreneurs, right, that they kind of dive headfirst into the business, you know, to the at the expense of everything else in their life sometimes. Mm. And they forget about, you know, just little things they enjoy, like playing guitar or cooking or whatever it is, gymnastics, right? Yep. Um, whatever it is, you know, that, that kind of feeds the soul a little bit. Um, totally. And I see that a lot with women. Uh huh. Uh huh. Men also, but there's something about like giving up a lot and being there. And so sometimes the like time management is not easy with job, business, kids. Uh, so the first thing they skip is time for them. Uh -huh. Or what I see also is, and maybe it's the same everywhere, but here you're about 16, 17, when you got to choose a path, uh -huh. like for studies and everything. So it's not realistic to think that at 16 or 17, you really know first yourself and second, when you want to do and achieve and whatever. Yeah. So sometimes it's big dreams, but you don't not know how to fulfill them. So you're um, listening to people around that might be teachers that think that you're very good in math and you should do math. And sometimes it's parents and sometimes it's... So I get people around their 40s that did follow 
the path drawn for them. So they did go in university. They did do like the law studies because their dad were lawyer or their teacher thought they were good at it. And mm -hmm. they they get to get success and they loved it, part of it. And then kids come in and marriage and okay. And now the money is good. The job is good. The family is good. Why do I feel like there's nothing that lights me up? Yeah. Okay. But what do you love passionately about all of this? Well, uh... <laughs> so sometimes it's just to go back. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it was not the good choice. And when I say the good choice, it's not that I mean that it wasn't okay. It It's part of you. But you might be arriving at 40 and saying, you know what, I did study law, but finally what I really wanted is and change. Mm -hmm. But the more you get into something from a lot of year, the more the, the, the choice is like difficult and implies a lot of, yeah. Especially yeah, if you've got, if you've got a, a, you know, a family and a mortgage and everything like that can throw a wrench into things. I, I used to, so, I mean, I, totally get this. I must've had probably four or five different careers before I was 35 years old, um, mm -hmm. before I kind of settled on entrepreneurship and kind of running my own business. But I remember in my twenties, I was working, um, at McAfee doing computer virus research, working in a cubicle. And there was a guy who, and I loved it at the time. You couldn't, yeah. pay, you couldn't pay me to do it now, but at the time it was exactly what I wanted to be doing. And I loved it. And I remember there was a guy who I worked with who was in his early 40s, probably about my age now, 42, 43. And he was, he had given his notice, you know, his two weeks notice, and he was quitting. He was going to go back to university and do psychology. And I thought that was the, at, at, you know, at 23 or however old I was, I thought that was the weirdest thing. I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> and now, right? You're like, obvious. 20 years later, it's like, oh, yeah, okay, that totally, totally makes sense. <laughs> and it's very courageous. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes, you know, to go back to anxiety, sometimes, you know, there's something inside mm -hmm. for years that you're like, nah, if I would have done a cho different choice, I would have go in psychology. If mm -hmm. I would have, and then it piled up and then you're like, I would have really loved that. Okay. Yeah. But you're not moving for many reasons because it's not the right time because you have the kids because they're young because whatever because you don't feel it's a good idea because you're scared of the 10 years studies that comes with uh -huh. it or whatever. But one day it feels like an evidence and you're like, I, th that's really what I want to do. Yeah. So you have two choices or you still change your mind and say, no, it will be too difficult. And then you're going to go back. The mentor I was talking about earlier talks about the why, you know, when you get to the why here, you need to do a choice. It's the anxious place because yeah. you need to choose a path. The yeah. right path is the one you, you choose uh, and you add new stuff. Like for example, okay, no, I'm not going to go and psychology because it's very hard but i'm gonna wonder if i can go and work in human resources for example like that i'm gonna work more with humans so you take the right path and then if you continue you take the right path then the right path then the right path then the right path and two days two weeks two months two years after you're still at the same place where you're wondering if it could be the good thing to go and mm -hmm. if you take the left path it's for example the psychology pan you only know about the first steps uh -huh. and it's very anxious like okay so i'm not sure but i feel like it's the good thing to do uh -huh. but you only see the first steps and mm -hmm. on the third step maybe your brain's gonna tell you you shouldn't have done that it's very difficult <laughs> And he's going to try to bring you back to security. And you're like, no, no, I, I've dreamed of that for years. So now I'm going to go that path. And then you continue and the anxiety goes down uh -huh. much more down than here 
where it goes down until it comes back, it goes up again and it goes up again and it goes up again. And we were talking about burnout and it's one of the reason is when you know you're trying to avoid something you're too scared of taking and then you're mm -hmm. like, because changing job, changing, go back to university, uh, having kids later on in life. I mean, there's many, many things that are scary. Yeah. But if you continue to push it aside, it comes back. Uh -huh. But if you take the first steps, those two, three, four, five steps are very difficult because you have to be like very focused <laughs> on that's a shitty idea, but uh -huh. it's going to be my way. And then anxiety goes down because you know that you are on the right path because you, yeah. you are achieving whatever you felt like was your calling. Yeah, but take if... the first take the first step. What's the worst that could happen? Yes. And I'll then take the guy. second one and ask yourself again, what's the worst step that could happen? And no. then the third. That's super fun. I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> Stephanie, again, this is a fantastic conversation. I can't believe we've already, <laughs> it's already three o'clock. Um, so <laughs> um, let's see where, uh, real quick, where can our viewers and listeners connect with you online? Uh, Stephanie Bergo on Facebook or on Instagram or on LinkedIn. And you'll find everything else uh, with my names. Uh, and like on your show, there's two episodes <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome we'll have of course yeah we'll have links to all of that on the show notes page for this um gosh i mean i stephanie I've, honestly i feel like we could probably keep going for another like two hours but <laughs> well, gonna... i'm gonna invite you on my podcast people yeah. can find me as well on trouve ta place find your place it's a bilingual podcast french and english Clearly, we're going to speak in English when Michael's going to come on it. Yes. But you'll be able to find <laughs> another conversation of you and I on that, too. <laughs> I think, yeah, the most the most French I know is probably just a couple swears that I think I learned from old Patrick Waugh interviews from the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Don't use them. Yeah. He no. wasn't very polite. <laughs> yeah. No. Waugh, he, he's got a, he's got a, a, a quick temper. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> totally. um, awesome. Stephanie Burgo, thank you so much for joining us once again on the Remarkable Coach podcast. Um, I'm definitely going to be on your podcast soon. And then I, I, you know, we have to keep this conversation going. So I'll invite you back again in the next, in another six months. It'll be great. Um, great thank, pleasure. You, thank you to our listeners and viewers. You guys are always fantastic. Thank you so much for being a part of this as well. And we'll see you guys next time. Take care.